Right, let's get this axle and tube off. If you can, get yourself an, an old parts tray, or this is actually a cutlery tray from a cutlery drawer. Um, they're really handy because you, you as you take things off, you can lay them down so you know which way they came off, and also you can lay them in order. This one's pretty clean to start. If you're planning on reusing the, the bearings especially, uh, you need to clean it all down first. Get all the, the crud and grime off it. I mean, this is, see, this is nice and shiny compared to most. Let's get this bearing cap off. Hopefully this will come off without too much rising. There we go. Okay, so you've got your cap and seal in there. I've got the trusty old wrecking bar out. I've got these for doing house stuff and they've been one of probably the most versatile tools I've ever bought. Yeah, rocking bars were all okay. So you've got a flat face on the outside look, and the inside face it's tapered. Little seal. Now I can't remember, I think some of these have actually got a flat face to them. So I'm going to keep it the same way, um, I think I've got a new one anyway, but I'm going to keep it so it goes back on the same way should I need to reuse it. Washer. I'll just quickly put this back together because I wanted to show you where the last seal is. Um, so the last seal to come off basically goes around the outer edge of the bearing. It shouldn't be all squashed and flat like that, but uh, when you get a new one it's, it's nice and round. Um, but that's basically where it sits. Again, I've just quickly reconstructed it. The bearing should be further in than there. Uh, it's just to show you that I've been doing this without the back plate on, and I wanted to show you where the back plate should sit. So basically, the back plate sits on its outer lip here. Um, if your brakes are all complete and they're all connected, which they probably are, um, in theory, you can actually remove it, um, if you're really careful, and hang it to one side. You will be connected using the copper nickel piping and you can kink it, so you've got to be really careful. And also, if you're doing lots of work like removing the axles and stuff, you might want to just disconnect it and, and reconnect and re-bleed later, um, just because it's really in the way when it hangs around here. Um, however, if you're just doing seals or bearings, then you can probably just get away with hanging it to one side uh, and working around it. Now, this bearing's actually already been removed, that's why it's stuck out so far. Um, but this is where your fun and games begin if you want to remove your wheel bearing at this point. Um, obviously the, the standard kit is a long fingered puller which goes into the centre here um, and then it should pull out quite easily but I don't think most people have got that Volkswagen tool um, so I've never seen one. So, uh, so it can be a bit of a fight. Um, some people put a groove in what's showing carefully um, and what that does is gives you a little bit of traction to get a chisel and a hammer or something behind it just to try and tap it out. Um, you're probably not bothered about saving the bearing anyway. Um, another way of doing it is to put your castle nut back on the end, so the big 36mm nut, put that back on the end just to protect your splines and then give it a whack. Um, what that does is it pushes the axle in, hopefully the bearing will slide up the axle just a fraction and when you pull it back out again, not as much as this because that's been removed already, it'll give you a small gap behind there and again if you've got a puller that's got quite a long reach on it, you can get behind the back of the bearing at that point to, to pull it off, um, or you can try something like the wrecking bars and see if you can tap it out or even lever it out. Um, again, you've got to be really careful with that method because when you bang the axle in, 
you can actually damage the pinion gears inside the gearbox so you just just have to be careful um, and that's not something I've ever done to be honest with you because I'm too clumsy <laughs> now um, a few months ago I created this um, I'll put a link to the des description above um, and it's how to basically make a wheel bearing puller um, DIY at home um, and if you want to have a go at making one of those that's how I removed these quite easily in the end um, it did take quite a bit of um, quite a few attempts so it's worth watching how I did it to uh, give you a good idea of what does and doesn't work first I'm going to say I'll, I'll link above for that one however we're going to continue on the other side of this video um, and I'm leaving the bearing in place um, on that one and I'm going to use this again I created a video a few months ago uh, showing you how I created this it is the simplest tool I've ever made probably it's literally four pieces of threaded bar and a bit of plate um, and basically what we'll do is we'll pull that on there we're going to pull the whole axle off together with the bearing all in one go no stress no banging um, and then we'll just tap the bearing out or pull the bearing out uh, when it's on the bench which makes it a far easier job I'm just going to use a chisel to put a line on the top of the spring plate in line with the, the bolt that goes through it. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because obviously I'm replacing the axles um, and when I put the new ones on I want them to go back onto the spring plate in the, the same position or as, as close as I can. very tight so the chances are that starting place might not be the right place anyway. What I loosened earlier. Part of the zebra. Pretty good nick for an old bump stop. That uh, I've already disconnected the damper. Maybe that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> Pulled the stud straight out the side of the gearbox. That's better. The nuts around the bottom of the axle plate flange are quite tricky to get to anyway. Uh, and these ones are absolutely caked in paint, uh, making them even trickier. So basically to improve access, I'm going to remove the four bolts which hold the gearbox mount onto the cradle. Um, so they're quick to remove and I should be able to jack the gearbox up to give me better access uh, to the side plate. I finished removing the, the nuts on the, um, the tube flange uh, and mine came off very easily. Now when you take this off you've got to be super careful um, because around here you have some large gaskets which are actually spacers. Um, I'll explain why but if you're planning to put it all back together again and you've not got replacements do your very best not to break them. And the opposites.
think it'll pull off now. Oh yeah, rock and roll. Sorted. Once you've got your tube off and you want to, if you want to get your bearing out, um, it's a good turn it over and put a bit of bar down and try and tap it out from the inside edge. But if you've got a basic puller like this, they're only about less than the tenner on eBay and stuff, and they're really simple to use. And so it's not worth messing. <laughs> Just get yourself. It just makes everything so much easier. Um, so I'll pop, try and pop a link in the description. best tenors I ever spent. Once the tube's removed you've got the plastic uh, packing or slider, I don't know what they call it. Um, it looks pretty scuffed up so I might look at getting a new one when we come to refit it. Next to remove is a C-clip. Um, get a half decent uh, tools, they only cost a few quid on eBay. I had a fight with electrical ones first couple of times I did this and it's not worth the effort to take a five or six quid. Something like that. Now we've removed the C-clip we should be able to pull the axle out. There's another ring, a thrust ring, which actually is around the axle which will come out with it and then behind that is two fulcrum plates. Now if you're going to be reusing the axles and the fulcrum plates you need to make a note of which come from which side um, because they do wear together and when you put them back together you want to put them back as they came out basically. Um, so I've got a little white marker pen, I put a dot on here and say my spade part at the end is at 45 degrees so in theory the one at the top will fall out and the one at the bottom will stay in place. Um, if you have it perfectly vertical you can have a situation where both plates fall out and get mixed up. Um, so try and avoid that if you can. That's the thrust ring. And the top fulcrum plate has fallen out, which is that one. We know it's that side, so I'm just going to put a little dot on there so I know which is which. That's the fulcrum plate. Uh, I'm going to be actually replacing the axles completely, so uh, I'm going to put them back in place. In a clean plastic bag, just to make sure the wedge is where they should be and don't fall out. Don't stop some of the dirt getting in there as well. And so we're going to cover that up and then uh, get the short axles ready. And we'll look at refitting this. That'll probably be the next video.